This short video will explain how the system timer work. The system timer, also called system dick or systic, is to generate systic interrupts at a fixed time interval. Here I give two example applications of the system timer. The first example is that the system timer can measure time elapsed. For instance, software can use the system timer to implement a time delay function. The second example is that we can execute some specific tasks periodically. For instance, we can use system timer to implement periodic polling to check peripheral status or read external inputs with a regular timed interval. In addition, Operating systems rely on the system timer to implement CPU scheduler. In order to support multitasking and improve the CPU utilization, the CPU scheduler periodically selects a new process from the ready queue to run next. The system timer is a standard hardware component built into ARM Cortex processors. Almost all ARM Cortex processors have the system timer component. If enabled, the system timer can periodically generate systic interrupt requests. The nested vectored interrupt controller, NVIC, monitors and handles all interrupt requests based on their priority levels. For systic interrupts, NVIC forces the core to execute the interrupt service routine named systic handler. The system timer is a 24-bit down counter. The counter decrements from the reload value to zero. After the counter reaches zero, the system timer copies the reload value stored in the reload value register. Then, the system timer starts to count down again. This diagram shows how the counter value change when the reload value is six. The reload value is stored in the systic load register. The counter counts down from 6 to 0. The counter has a total of 7 unique values. When the counter makes transition from 1 to 0, the system timer generates an interrupt request. On the next clock cycle, the counter is reinitialized to 6. The counter counts down again on subsequent clock cycles. This counting process repeats. The interval of the system timer interrupts equals 2 the reload value plus 1, times the period of the source clock. Let's first take a look at the Cystic Control and Status Register. In this register, only 4 bits are used, including 1 status bit, and 3 control bit. The status bit is the count flag bit. The 3 control bits include the clock source selection bit the tick interrupt enable bit, and the timer enable bit. As discussed previously, the 24-bit counter counters down from the reload value to zero. When the counter decrements from one to zero, the count flag is set to one. Now, let's take a look at the control bits in the Cystic Control and Status Register. First of all, the clock source bit selects the clock source for the counter. If the clock source bit is 1, the processor clock is selected. If the clock source bit is 0, the external clock is selected. For STM32L4, the processor clock is the AHB clock. The external clock is the AHB clock slowed down by a frequency divider, 8. Next, let's take a close look at the enable bit. Software can set or clear this bit to enable or disable the system timer. Specifically, the enable bit can enable or disable the clock signal by using the send gate. If the enable bit is 1, the system timer is enabled because the signal of the clock source can pass through the end gate. The interrupt enable bit, tick INT, enables the interrupt. A cystic interrupt request is generated if both the interrupt enable bit and the count flag bit are 1. In other words, if the interrupt enable bit is 1, a cystic interrupt request is generated every time the time counter decrements from 1 to 0.
The system timer is controlled by four registers, including the control and status register we just described, the reload value register, Cystic Load, the current value register, Cystic VAL, and the calibration register, Cystic CALIB. Next, we will take a close look at these registers. Even though the reload value register has 32 bits, the top 8 bits are not used. It can hold a 24-bit value, with a maximum value of FFFFFF in hex, or 16,777,215 in decimal. The counter counts down, from the reload value, to 0. Writing 0 to the reload value register, disables the counter, on the next trap, independently of the timer enable bit, tick INT. The Cystic counter logic maintains this counter value of 0 after the wrap. The interval of two consecutive Cystic interrupts is, reload plus 1, times, the source clock period. For example, if 100 clock cycles are needed between two consecutive Cystic interrupts, the reload value should be 99. Here is the, current value register. Reading this register returns the value of the counter, at the time the register is accessed. When the counter makes a transition from 1 to 0, the system timer generates a cystic interrupt. Writing any value to the current value register, clears this register, and also clears the count flag bit in the control and status register. This causes the system timer to reload from the reload value register, on the next timer clock. Writing to the current value register does not trigger cystic interrupts. Pay attention. The counter has a random value on reset. Therefore, software should always clear the counter to zero in the initialization code. This can be achieved by writing zero to the current value register. The cystic calibration register is a read only register. It contains the value TENMS, which holds the reload value yielding a period of 10 milliseconds. TENMS stands for 10 milliseconds. However, many chips do not implement this feature, or have a different definition in this field. For example, STM32L4 defines this field as the reload value for 1 millisecond, instead of 10 milliseconds. Here is the example code, which initializes and enables the system timer. First, software disables Cystic by clearing the control and status register. Then, software initializes the reload value register, based on the function's input argument, ticks. In order to have, n, ticks between two consecutive Cystic interrupts, the reload value should be, n-1. Next. We give the cystic interrupts the largest priority value, making the cystic interrupt the least urgent. Then, software clears the current value register. The cystic counter has a random value on reset. Software should always clear the counter during the initialization. Then, we select the processor clock as the source clock of the cystic counter. We can use either the processor clock or the external clock. After that, Software has to enable the cystic interrupts, by setting the tick INT bit, in the control and status register. At the end, software enables cystic, by setting the enable bit to 1, in the control and status register. This example demos, how to use the cystic to implement a delay function. We first define a global, volatile variable, named time delay. The interrupt service routine of system timer, cystic handler, decrements the time delay variable by 1, each time a cystic interrupt takes place. The delay function initializes the time delay variable, and waits until time delay is decremented to 0 by cystic handler. Suppose the clock source that drives the timer counter has a frequency of 80 MHz. We want to generate a cystic interrupt every 10 milliseconds. What is the reload value? Here is the diagram of cystics. 
This is the clock signal, which has a frequency of 80 MHz. A cystic interrupt is generated every 10 milliseconds. An interrupt is generated when the counter makes the transition from 1 to 0. The reload value is calculated in this way. Reload value equals to 10 milliseconds, divided by the clock period, minus 1. This is equivalent to 10 milliseconds, multiply the clock frequency, minus 1. The final result is 799,999. Please visit the book website for tutorials and project templates.